for Good evening all and welcome to this evening's full council meeting. I am Councillor Wendy Johnson, Mayor of Warrington, and I will be chairing the meeting. Before I start my initial comments, could you all mute your microphones or phones until you are asked to speak? In order to mute yourself, please press star six. When you're invited to speak, please unmute by pressing star six again and turn your camera on. You will have seen there is a large amount of business to get through this evening. So whilst I do not wish to stifle debate, can you please consider your contribution and whether the point has already been made? It is very difficult to chair a meeting of the full council in a virtual manner with the legal framework, taking the vote councillor by councillor and seeking contributions. So can you please remain patient during the meeting? Due to the current coronavirus pandemic, the council has taken steps to follow restrictions and health guidance in relation to self-isolation and social distancing, whilst fulfilling its duties as a council. The meeting is being broadcast live to the public in line with requirements of the Coronavirus Act 2020, Section 78. I will now call each councillor's name alphabetically to determine if they are present, and I will state if they have sent apologies. Following this, I will list the names of any officers present. Thank you. A. Abbey. Present. B. Barr. Present. R. Bate. Present. M. Biggin. R. Bowden. Present. K. Buckley. Present. P. Carey. Present. J. Carter. H. Cooksey. Present. M. Cregan. J. Davidson. Present. L. Durer. Present. G. Fellows. Present. C. Fitzsimmons. J. Flarty. Present. D. Friend. Present. G. Friend. Present. C. Froggart. Present. J. Grime. Present. J. Guthrie. Present. S. Hall. Present. M. Hannon. Present. S. Harris. Present. J. Hart. T. Higgins. Present. A. Hill. Present. T. Jennings. Present. D. Keane. Present. J. Kerr Brown. Present. A. King. Present. R. Knowles. Present. S. Krizanak. Oh, I, I thought it meant the other way round. No, you have to find here. Could I ask, could we um, remember to mute um, our microphones after we speak, and please? Um, S. Krizanak. B. Ma. I. Marks. Present. T. McCarthy. Present. M. McLaughlin. Present. C. Mitchell. Present. L. Morgan. Present. K. Morris. Present. H. Mundry. Present. K. Mundry. Present. S. Parrish. Present. H. Patel. Present. D. Price. R. Pennell. M. Smith. Present. M. Tarr. P. Walker. Here. P. Warburton. Here. G. Wellburn. 
Present. Present. Jay Wheeler. Present. T Williams. Present. P Wright. S Wright. Okay, thank you. Officers in attendance tonight are Stephen Broomhead, Chief Executive, Matthew Cumberbatch, Director of Law and Governance, and Sharon Parker, Democratic Services Manager. Moving on to item two, I will move the minutes of the council meeting held on the 24th of February 2020 and Thursday the 2nd of July 2020. Do any members have any other matters of accuracy they wish to raise? Please indicate now. Can the deputy second the minutes, please? OK, we seem to have lost the deputy um, from a connection. Could somebody else please second the minutes for me? I'll move, Mr. Madam Mayor, Councillor Carey. Thank you, Councillor Carey. Excuse me, Madam Mayor, it's uh, Councillor Hart here. Can you put my name on the list of those present? We can, thank you. Thank you. So I'll take it that all members are voting in support of the minutes. Councillor Carey has um, seconded those, thank you. Item three is correspondence from previous meeting and item three is just for noting, thank you. Item four, code of conduct declarations of interest. Now, previously we've had the following declarations made in relation to the pay policy statement. That's councillors P. Carey, J. Davidson, D. Friend, G. Friend, H. Mundry, K. Mundry, P. Warburton and T. Williams. Um, they declared an interest in regards to pay policy statement 2019-2020 um, due to family members being employed by the council. I will be adding myself to that declaration and councillor Hart. Councillor Warburton withdrew from the meeting um, in 2019-2020 um, and took no, no part in the boat, vote. Can you please let me know um, if those that have been mentioned wish to continue with the declarations and if there are anybody else that would like to add themselves to the list for that specific item? Any changes? doesn't appear so okay now also for item 12 we've got a declaration from councillors Morgan and Grime I'm going to take it that that's the declarations for that meeting as nobody has signaled they wish to speak thank you councillors at this stage we are going to go to item 8 which is a question from a member of the public as detailed in the top-up letter we will be taking the one question received by the public first. The question was, will be taken as read, and this is a question from Councillor, Mr. Sorry, from Mr. C. Taylor to Councillor Guthrie. Councillor Guthrie, please respond. Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Bowden, I'll I'll take this question um, in response. I've agreed that with Councillor Guthrie. Thank you, Councillor um, Bowden. So, um, firstly, obviously, to thank uh, Mr. Taylor for his um, his question. Um, I'm obviously well aware of the significant changes and events that have happened uh, this year, uh, most significant, of course, being um, the coronavirus. And it really remains to be seen what the long term uh, impact of um, COVID-19 is in terms of the recovery, but obviously in terms of um, the economic situation for the nation, let alone uh, Warrington. And obviously recognise as well the continued impact that that is having um, on our society here uh, and on our local economy. Having said that, the process of developing the proposed submission uh, version of the local plan was based on uh, the input of residents uh, and developers and other interested parties and representative groups during the formal consultation that was held last year. 
And I think it would be both improper and unjust to those who um, have made those representations to consider further uh, input to the process outside of the statutory process, which the council followed and has continued to do so to the current date. That said, um, I think you know we do need to uh, be mindful of the impacts of COVID-19. We need to be mindful of the current um, economic situation. We need to be mindful of the government's plans, um, particularly with regard to um, the planning system uh, in the in the uh, recent white paper, etc. And I expect to be announcing um, a time frame for the local plan um, in the coming weeks. Um, and obviously, we'll um, uh, be making that statement to to council and publicly in due course. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Taylor, do you have? A supplementary question, Mr. Taylor. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, yes, I do, um, because my question uh, asked: Will the cabinet give serious consideration to the document that we are going to release? Uh, we, the South Warrington Parish Council's local plan group, we're going to release. Um, the detailed case for the borough council to reconsider its local plan proposals in the light of COVID-19 and other things. And that question, uh, with respect, ha has not been answered in Councillor Guthrie's statement. So I wonder if I could restate the question. Will the leader please confirm that he and his cabinet will give serious consideration to our document, which we put forward in the best interests of the whole borough? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Councillor Bowden. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Madam Mayor. I'm uh, I'm more than happy to restate my position in that it would be improper to consider further representations from interested groups outside of the statutory consultation process. However, I am confident that the issues uh, which will be raised by um, the South Warrington Parish Council's local plan group are exactly the same issues that we are mindful of currently. Um, and as I said, I'll be making an announcement in relation to the local plan, uh, further development and timeline uh, in the coming weeks. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think there will be anything that comes forward in that. And uh, as I said, I can't formally consider it as part of that process. But um, certainly it'll be a useful checklist for us in terms of ensuring that we've um, countenanced exactly the same issues uh, in terms of our, our planning for taking the local plan forward. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Mr Taylor, you can now continue to watch the meeting via the live stream on the Council website, should you wish to do so. Thank you for your question. Thank you, I Madam Mayor. Thank you. Item five, Civic Mayor's announcements. During the COVID pandemic, the way the Mayor's duties are carried out has changed with events being cancelled. During this time, I have done remote video calls with care homes for events such as a 101st birthday celebration, remote afternoon teas and VE Day celebration events. I have sent video messages for Father's Day and laid a wreath at the Cenotaph for VJ Day. We marked Armed Forces Day with a minute silence on the Town Hall forecourt. I have sent cards and messages to groups, volunteers, health service and frontline workers who have been doing so much to care and support people in our town and also those who have raised funds for various charities. I registered with Warrington Voluntary Action um, to offer support where needed also. I have recently done my first community event since lockdown, which was at Birchwood Shopping Centre and was the launch of Warrington Disability Partnership Shop Mobility Scheme. Thank you. Moving on to item number six, announcements from the leader. Before the leader commences his announcements, please note there is a 15 minute cap on questions to him. Councillor Bowden, could you please make your announcements? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I circulated my announcements on Friday morning. Um, obviously, uh, time. Um, the government's uh, announcement regarding COVID-19 additional restrictions in Warrington and the North West. I think to enable members to have more opportunity for questions, I'll take those as read. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. 
Do members have any questions for the leader or members of the cabinet, um, please, on his announcements? If so, please indicate. Yes, I do. Councillor Barr. OK, thank you. Councillor Barr, would you like to go ahead with your question? Uh, thank you. I'm grateful to uh, Councillor Bowden's uh, statement, uh, both on Friday and the update on, on, on Saturday. Very much appreciated. Uh, just a small number of questions. Test, track and trace, still a problem in Warrington. To what extent is the central government cooperating with us to involve us in making sure that we have testing regime appropriate for the town? Uh, very pleased about the football <coughs> in town square, but uh, residents uh, and people are bothered that it is at the cost of social distancing. Uh, what are we doing to make sure that town square remains COVID spending? COVID safe whilst uh, carrying on and maintaining as high a footfall as possible uh, because it's a, it's a success that we uh, all want to praise. Uh, also, a significant minority of people in the town are ignoring um, the wearing of masks or other lockdown activities. Uh, the government has now uh, put in very heavy fines, but uh, it's not at all clear what role the council will have in enforcement. Uh, and only and just two more. Uh, one, just a statement. Questions that were asked at last council took a very long time to answer. Uh, answers to questions should be ready for the council meeting. Can we be assured that all the questions asked tonight will be answered ideally tomorrow, but by the end of this week at the latest? And finally, what steps is the leader taking to engage the whole of the council in consultations, briefings and decision making? Uh, I'm aware that some briefings have worked quite well, but I'm also aware that very many members of the council appear to be completely outside the process. Given that this is the new normal, we really have to have the whole council working in together uh, for the future of the town. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor Bowden. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thanks to um, Councillor Barr for the questions. Um, I think certainly um, in a situation where the town um, is experiencing a significant increase in the number of COVID-19 um, cases, um, obviously above government thresholds, um, and it's obviously led to the recent intervention by government in terms of restrictions, it's quite clear that testing is a, is a, a vital part of our response. I think it's safe to say that um, the testing system has been pretty shambolic. Um, you know, certainly residents that I've spoken to who've been, you know, sent to North Wales or sent to Telford or wherever else. You know, if you were displaying symptoms of COVID, uh, the last thing you should be doing is, you know, hopping on public transport and going, you know, 100 miles away in order to get a test. And quite clearly, resources need to be um, put in to ensure that residents, when they display symptoms, can access a test promptly. Uh, can do it you know, within a reasonable distance of their own home and then can take appropriate action in terms of isolating or otherwise. I think you know, it's not so much um, uh, track and trace, it's, um, it's trace the test at the moment um, and that is you know, a real problem for, for residents. So I agree, I agree entirely with Councillor Barr. We continue to make representations to government um, and to other government agencies about um, making sure there's adequate capacity and that capacity supports those areas which most need it, i.e. the current sort of hotspots for, for COVID-19 cases. Um, I take his uh, point around Times Square. Um, obviously, you know, Times Square is no different to any other um, public venues um, in terms of needing to be COVID secure. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm assured that the staff um, at the market and uh, around Times Square, you know, are um, trying to operate appropriate COVID secure arrangements um, and I think it kind of comes to, to your next point about the minority of people Councillor Barr you know um, regardless of what steps and measures you put in place ultimately individuals need to take responsibility for their actions and um, I think you know issues such as face coverings um, adequate social distancing are, are really important you know public health professionals tell us that those are the key things maintain space and to use um, to exercise good hygiene and obviously to cover um, or to use a face covering and so I think really we need to do more there in terms of um, you know explaining to people in Warrington their own responsibility it shouldn't just be about what's legislated it should be about what's right um, and what you know and, and sort of pushing home that that good advice 
Um, so we'll continue to do that. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes, you know, shopkeepers and you know, owners of premises are put in a difficult position because it's not their job to enforce the law. Um, you know, you can only put in place the, the arrangements um, and, and hope that people obviously adhere to them. Um, and there does seem to be a lack of challenge there. And I think that's not helped by exemptions for, for example, certain medical conditions where, of course, people don't really want to challenge because they don't want to necessarily upset someone who you know, has a genuine reason for, for not adhering to, to their use. Um, in terms of um, questions, responses, I think we probably, um, from the last meeting, um, probably sort of exercise a, a more relaxed time frame that we'd be used to doing in terms of providing a written response. And I think um, uh, it, it's a fair comment and I will ensure that cabinet colleagues respond quickly um, and that we can get um, those responses out to members uh, as if it was in real time. Um, your final point was around decision making. And I think, you know, the last six months have been, uh, you know, unprecedented in terms of local government. Um, you know, I think it's taken us a long time to get the council, you know, fully up and running. Um, we obviously focused initially on the uh, the key sort of statutory functions of the council um, and the cabinet. And I think now that we're, you know, getting into our first proper virtual council meeting, um, then I think, you know, we're sort of demonstrating that we're getting back to some kind of normality. In terms of decision making, I've, you know, anything which, you um, you know, has be, has been within the remit of cabinet, has been dealt with in the normal way. Um, but, but I would say a lot of the decision making has been at an operational level over recent months. But, you know, under the leadership of the chief executive, um, you know, and obviously I was party to a lot of those discussions on key issues. But um, fundamentally, it was about operational matters for the council rather than um, strategic, um, you know, and executive decisions for for cabinet or council. So I, I was comfortable with those arrangements. Obviously, over the course of um, the coronavirus crisis, you know, I did um, issue probably 30 odd um, updates to members, obviously to uh, to keep them informed as to what the key issues were and the kind of decisions that were being made. Um, so. Uh, I think it's inevitable in a crisis that, you know, decision making has, has ended up um, being quite compressed. Um, and obviously, a lot of the time, those were um, heat of the moment kind of decisions that had to be made, you know, in order to deal with the emerging situation, obviously ensure the continuing functionality of the council. So um, I don't think that would be amenable to involving uh, wider members uh, in decision making. But hopefully, you know, if this is going to be the new normal, and um, we'll get back to um, you know more engaged council and um, through committees and through full council um, in terms of how we move forward. Thank, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Any more questions? Councillor Walker, can I see you signalling? Right. Yes, it's a question to Councillor Guthrie on her report, which was circulated, and thank you very much for that. Ham, she expresses concern uh, about particulate matter in Warrington, PM 2.5. Can she tell me how many locations the borough is measuring particulate matter? That's something that we're bringing to the next um, air quality uh, forum and we will be looking at how we're actually measuring this um, at that forum. Um, I've just actually looked on as a matter of interest on the um, the DEFRA website because it's interesting that you can actually pinpoint air quality um, at a particular uh, date and time. And on the 21st of September, which is today, at three o'clock this afternoon, all our pollution levels with DEFRA were actually gauged as low. And that was that was for the northwest Merseyside um, and elsewhere in the towns and cities, Warrington was gauged at two. So we're actually sort of in the lower quadrant of, of um, uh, pollution in terms of air quality. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Guthrie. Yep, Sorry. Any you. further questions? No? 
I can't hear anybody else speaking. So, so thank you for that. I'm going to move on now to item seven, and this is to receive reports from the cabinet and the council's committees. Now, for item seven point one. Um, pay policy statement 2020 through 21. I'm going. To, can I ask people to mute if you're you're not about to speak, please? I will give a moment for Councillor Warbenden to leave the meeting. OK, thank you. So I'm going to ask Councillor Mitchell, can you propose a report and Councillor Bowden, can you second it, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I propose this report. Councillor Bowden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to second this report. OK, Councillor Mitchell, are you going to speak? I don't intend to speak on the report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Bowden. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. No, I don't propose um, to, to make anything in terms of presentation. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Do any other members wish to speak on this report? Please indicate. Councillor Krizanets. OK, would you like to go ahead, Councillor Krizanets? Uh, yes, uh, looking at the um, percentage of uh, increase, I just find uh, difficult to understand why a grade zero one um, is paid £9.25 per hour, and then we have a grade A, uh, at the column 76, £87.12. I think the this uh, percentage increase is quite understandable, but when you look in the reality, the amount of uh, money that individual gets paid um, mm -hmm. is quite um, disproportionate. And I suggest that uh, the uh, when we do the calculation, that the, those that uh, have a lower grade, uh, like zero one, uh, have a slight uh, slightly greater increase in the pay and the grade A, um, uh, the column 76, uh, has reduced uh, uh, increase by uh, a certain percentage so that this disparity is lowered. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mitchell, do you wish to respond if there's no further, no further questions? Uh, just a couple of points, Madam Mayor. Just say that um, if you look at paragraph 11.1 in the report, you'll see that from the 1st of April 2020, the council's committed at the lowest end um, to pay £9.30 an hour because we are a, a living wage employer as in as opposed to a minimum wage. And um, I take I take the point about the disparity, but I would also point at paragraph 7.4 in the report and the, the highest paid members of the council are waiving the um, the amount that they get for travelling expenses. So that's at least some contribution towards the council. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Barr. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam Mayor. Uh, I think it's a good report. I think that uh, the, the settlement is uh, is appropriate. Uh, however, to understand the what we're actually dealing with, it would be really helpful if the, the table in Appendix A could have an additional column that which would give us the number of people who are paid at each of those grade levels. And that would give us a, a much clearer idea of what the structure of pay across the council is. Obviously, it wouldn't identify uh, individuals, but it would simply tell us how many are in, in each band and I'd be very grateful if that could be done in future or whether an updated version of Appendix A could be supplied. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? OK, thank you. We're going to take this to the vote. OK, you will be asked to say for, against, abstain and I'm going to ask the Chief, Chief Executive to take the vote. Thank you. Have we got the chief executive there? Um, 
Welcome, uh, Councillor Council Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry I was late there. So, no sorry again, please. So, Councillor Abbey. Councillor Barr. Four. Four. Councillor Bate. Four. Begin. Bowden. Four. Buckley. Four. Carey. Abstain. Carter. Cooksey. Four. Cregan. Four. Davidson. Four. Pira. Four. Fellows. Four. Fitzsimmons. Blarty. Four. Thank you. Friend. Abstain. Friend, Graham Friend. Abstain. Frogger. Four. Grime. Four. Guthrie. Four. Hall. Four. Hannon. Four. Four. Harris. Four. Art. Higgins. Four. Hill. Four. Jennings. Four. Keen. Four. Kerr Brown. Four. King. Four. Knowles. Four. Krishanak. Four. Councillor Mark. Councillor Marks. Four. That's McCarthy. Four. That's McLaughlin. Four. That's Mitchell. Four. That's Morgan. Four. That's Morris. Four. That's Mundry. Hans Mundry. Abstain. That's K Mundry. Abstain. That's Parish. Four. That's Patel. Four. That's Price. That's the Pennell. That's the Matt Smith. Four. That's the Tart. That's the Walker, Peter Walker. Four. Four. That's Wolverton. That's the Wellborn. Castle Wheeler. Four. Castle Williams. Abstain. Castle Wright, Pat Wright. Castle Steve Wright. Thank you, members. Is Councillor Hart here? Um, I'm afraid I spoke uh, incorrectly. Can I abstain? Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, members. Thank you. Um, so that's carried. Thank you. Thank you, members. Um, we're going to send a message now to Councillor Warburton to let him know he can return to the meeting. So next, item 7.2, which is Treasury Management Outturn Report. Councillor Fitzsimmons, can you propose report? And Councillor Froggett, can you second it, please? Madam Mayor, I think there are... Um, microphone problems with Councillor Fitzsimmons. I have seen him online, but um, he doesn't seem to be able to communicate with us. Would you like me to propose that in, in his absence on communication problems? Yeah, we'll just give one more shout out. Um, Councillor Fitzsimmons, can you hear and respond? OK, Councillor Frogger, do you wish to go ahead and, and propose and then we'll ask for a seconder? Yeah, I'll, I'll propose the, uh, the motion in, in the paper. OK, thank you. Can I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Parrish, I'll, I'll second. Councillor Parrish. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parrish. So, Councillor Frogger, do you wish to speak? No, I don't wish to speak to it. Councillor Parrish? No, do you thank wish to you, speak? Sir. 
Do any other members wish to speak on the report? No, okay. So we're going to take it to the vote. We're going to go through the same process as before. Um, if you will state for, against or abstain, and I'm going to pass over to the Chief Executive again to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Abbey? For. Councillor Barr? For. Councillor uh, Bates? For. Councillor Biggin? Councillor Bowden? For. Councillor Buckley? For. Councillor Carey? For. Councillor Carter? Councillor Cooksey? For. Councillor Cregan? For. Councillor Davidson? For. Councillor Durant? For. Councillor Fellows? For. Councillor Fitzsimmons? Councillor Flaherty? For. Councillor D. Friend? For. Councillor Graham Friend? For. Councillor Froggett? For. Councillor Grime? For. Councillor Guthrie? For. Councillor Hall? For. Councillor Hannon? For. Councillor Harris? For. Councillor Hart? Councillor Higgins? For. Councillor Hill? For. Councillor Jennings? For. Councillor Keane? For. Councillor Kerr Brown? For. Councillor King? For. Councillor Knowles? For. Councillor Krishinak? Councillor Mark? For Councillor Krishinak? For. Councillor Mark? Councillor Marks? For. Councillor McCarthy? Councillor McLaughlin. For. Councillor Mitchell. For. Councillor Morgan. For. Councillor Morris. For. Councillor H. Mundry. For. Councillor K. Mundry. For. Councillor Parrish. For. Councillor Patel. For. Councillor Price. Councillor Pennell. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Can I just clarify it's for 7.2, Stephen? I'm sorry, two. I came two. in late. Two. Yes, uh, yeah. four. Yeah. Thank you. Four. Councillor, I've got that. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor T. Williams. Four. Thank you. Councillor P. Wright. Councillor S. Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, that's carried. We're going to move on now to 7.3, Director of Public Health. We have Councillor Bowden to propose the report and Councillor Mitchell, can you second it, please? Councillor Bowden. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Members will be aware that um, under our um, uh, constitution, pay policy and, and staff employment rules that senior um, officer posts. Oh, well. So keep your eye on that on mute and mute. Right. It comes up. Can I just remind, um, sorry, Councillor Bowden, can I just remind people to remember to mute? We're getting a bit of over the top conversation. Here. Sorry, Councillor Bowden, back to you. It's OK. OK, Madam Mayor. Teething problems first time round. Um, uh, obviously, um, members will be aware that senior officers um, uh, with a remuneration package in excess of 100,000 um, are subject to approval of full council on appointment. Um, members will uh, hopefully be aware that our previous director of public health, um, Dr. Muna Abdelaziz, um, uh, resigned uh, early on in the year and the council went through a process of uh, recruiting a new director of public health. Um, we did have an interim arrangement whereby we shared um, uh, with Holton for a short period. Um, we in, um, had a uh, senior officer employment um, committee meeting um, which was uh, fully represented and we considered um, the applicants and resolved to um, make a conditional offer to um, Tara Raj 
uh, for the position of Director of Public Health, obviously subject to the agreement of, of full council and the usual arrangements. Um, that uh, representation to council for that approval was due to take place for the full council meeting on the 23rd of March. And then obviously as a result of um, the coronavirus pandemic, uh, that meeting didn't take place. Uh, and this is the first opportunity since then um, to bring this matter in front of full council. Um, obviously, um, it, you know, the, the coronavirus um, crisis um, is fundamentally around public health. And so we took the decision to proceed with um, the employment of uh, Tara Raj as Director of Public Health over that time. Um, in order that the council was fully represented um, in, in public health matters that were key to the town in, in relation to the coronavirus crisis. So um, we proceeded that um, with that decision with the full agreement of the Chief Officer Employment Committee, um, including myself and the leader of the opposition, Councillor Barr, um, and proceeded with the appointment of uh, Tara Raj from the 1st of October. So obviously we're now coming back to full council for retrospective um, approval of that decision. And uh, on that basis, I'll move the recommendation in, in section nine, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm second in this proposal. OK, thank you. Do any members wish to speak on this report? Please indicate. No, OK, thank you. We're going to take this to the vote in exactly the same as way as we have done before. And I'm going to hand over to the chief executive. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Barr. Four. Councillor Bate. Four. Councillor Biggin. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Carter. Councillor Cooksey. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Dereer. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Fitzsimmons. Councillor Jay Forty. Four. Councillor Friend. Four. Councillor Graham Friend. Four. Councillor Froggett. Four. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hammond. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Biggin Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krishanak. Four. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor. K Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Price. Councillor Purnell. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tarr. Four. Councillor Walker. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. Councillor P. Wright. And Councillor S. Wright. OK, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, that's carried, but could I just make the point that Councillor Bowden stated that it was um, from the 1st of October, so he's a little bit ahead of ourselves. It was actually the 1st of August. Mm. Did I say okay. that? I'm sure I said first of August, Madam Mayor. Um, happy to well, be corrected. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Okay, the move... 1st of October, Ross. <laughs> oh, did he? Thank you. Well, that, that's good. Um, 7.4, item 7.4. COVID-19 urgent and delegated decisions. Again, to Councillor Bowden to propose and Councillor Mitchell to second. Thank you. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I think um, we've got mixed up here because 7.4 should be proposed by Councillor Fitzsimmons. Um, we think we've lost Councillor oh, Fitzsimmons. Okay. Let's just do a check, Councillor Fitzsimmons. No, Councillor Bowden, um, I think I'm back to okay. you. That's OK. I, I would put, given that it's a report of the Constitutional Subcommittee, Madam Mayor, I, I don't know whether the Deputy Chair is, is on, who should perhaps propose it ahead of me. Yeah, I'm here. I'm happy to propose that. Is that Colin? It is, yes. OK, Councillor Froggart. So I propose the paper. As second. a member of the committee, I'm happy to second. I was down for I was down for seconding it though. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, you're making this very interesting for me tonight. So I've got Councillor Frogger to propose, and um, was it Councillor Councillor Diane Friend to second? Was that right? On the order, sorry, on the I should order have read the minute. Mm. On the order, from Adam the it's, it's down to me to second, and I think we. We came to the, that decision for me to second it on obviously on the basis that um, the urgent and delegated decisions were made um, you know over the the last six months in consultation with myself so obviously it kind of it covered both bases really with constitutional sub and obviously my input so I'm happy to um, to second the proposal. Okay that's fine so I've got Councillor Froggart proposing, Councillor Bowden seconding. OK, I'm going to we're going to do that now again because we've had a few conversations since we started. So, Councillor Froggart, back to you to propose. I'd like to propose the recommendations within the paper. Thank you. Councillor Bowden. I'm happy to second the recommendations at Section 11. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, anybody, do either of you wish to speak? No. Councillor no, thank Bowden. You. OK. Do any members wish to speak on this report? No, OK, thank you. We are now going to go to the vote again through exactly the same process as before, and I'm going to hand over to the Chief Exec. Thank you. Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Barr. Four. Councillor Bate. Four. <coughs> Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Cooksey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Durea. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Flarty. Four. Councillor D Friend. Four. Councillor G Friend. Four. Councillor Frogger. Four. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hannon. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krizinak. Four. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor Lachlan. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Mundry. Four. Councillor Mundry. Karen. Oh. Yeah. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Mattel. Four. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Peter Walker. Councillor Paul Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. 
Councillor Williams. Oh. Have I missed anyone, uh, members, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you. Um, item 7.5. Corporate strategy 2020 to 2024. Councillor Bowden to propose and Councillor Mitchell to second. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Council's corporate strategy um, for 2018-2000, uh, sorry, 2018 to 2020 um, expired this year and um, members will recall that we had um, a local government association peer review um, that was conducted last year and as part of our action plan from that peer review we agreed to develop a new corporate strategy for the council um, to set out obviously our priorities, uh, milestones and measures to ensure delivery. Um, we developed that um, through a series of workshops um, Firstly, as a cabinet group, um, separately with uh, the senior leadership team of the council and then in a joint session together. Um, and I think it was um, it, it was a really constructive process. Um, we, um, I think, have signalled um, a, a shift in some of our administrative thinking um, around the priorities for the council. And obviously, you know, throughout austerity, um, income and commercial activity the council has been to the fore we've been very strong in terms of regeneration you just need to look at Times square and other parts of the town and um i think it was time for us to um put a bit more attention to some of the people focused um, activity so we often talk about people in place um i think we see a shift in in corporate strategy to be more um people focused through the document that we've developed I think the other thing that's you know has, has really helped focus um, the mind in terms of the purpose of the council has obviously been the coronavirus crisis um, and you know our um, whilst our ambition for the town is not um, in any way dimmed by the activities of, of the last um, few months um, quite clearly you know our ability to recover strongly from um, the coronavirus uh, pandemic you know, is of vital importance to um, our residents and to the town and obviously ensuring that we can bounce back um, in the way that we often have done, you know, with a with a robust and resilient um, economy that works for everybody. Um, and of course, you know, in terms of um, strategy, you know, we talk a lot about the success of the town and the strength of the economy, but it needs to mean something to everybody. And you know, there's, there's little point in having a strong economy um, with you know, a, a wealth of jobs if people in our town are unable to um, gain access to the education that will put them in uh, good stead for those kind of jobs, but obviously just to get the jobs at all. And so we recognise, you know, um, our priorities in, in terms of um, pulling everybody up and that everybody gains in the prosperity um, of the town. I think unlike previous corporate strategies, um, We've been a lot more um, specific in terms of targets. Um, you'll see in the report, um, which is uh, attached as Appendix 1, there's direct accountability, both in terms of portfolio holders, but obviously as well in terms of senior officers of the council, you know, who will be you know, held responsible for delivering on some very specific objectives, which we feel are, are absolutely key to um, delivering on our pledges and priorities. So um, Cabinet considered um, this new corporate strategy at their last meeting um, and obviously recommended um, that it comes forward to full council with our full recommendation for council to endorse it. Um, this is a corporate strategy to take us through to 2024 um, and we feel it reflects the needs of Warrington uh, in order to make it um, a town which works for everybody, um, where you know, people can come and invest um, in terms of business, they, they, they do that in the confidence that the council is a strong partner, that people could come and, and live here, raise families here in the knowledge that, you know, the services they need um, are of, of good quality uh, and provided by the council and partners. And that everybody, regardless of age, ability or attainment, has the opportunities, opportunity to succeed here in Warrington. And on that basis, I'll move the recommendation as in the report. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Mitchell. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second the report. OK, thank you. Do any members wish to speak on the report? Uh, yes, please, Madam Mayor. Councillor Barr. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, grateful for the strategy. The strategy is very difficult to disagree with. It's full of motherhood and apple pie and there are all the things that uh, I think that anybody who is interested in the well-being of Warrington uh, would subscribe to. Uh, but, but that's the bit that bothers me. Uh, looking through, uh, actually checking the deliverability of some of these because these have been in our strategies in the past um, and being really critical about where we failed to to deliver is missing. Uh, I'll take one item from delivering our strategy, which is a digital council. Uh, I've been on the council for 16 years now. I've always been interested in our progress towards becoming a digital council. And even when we were running the council, uh, we were going to be a digital council real anytime soon. When we lost control, Labour took over, it was going to be a digital council anytime soon. Whereas in practice, we are moving relatively slowly. I think we are slow by comparison to other councils uh, to uh, fulfilling that that promise. So it's all very well having a strategy, but I think it is important also uh, to be realistic about where we can deliver on the strategy and to fess up where we haven't delivered on the previous strategy. It's no good just rolling over items into a new, into a new, into a new strategy. So I'm perfectly happy to support the document. I think my group will support the, 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 the document, but I would have liked to have seen more broader council involvement in the strategy and more critical discussion of the items rather than it being simply a cosy chat between cabinet members and senior officers. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? No. No. OK, thank you. We're going to take that to the vote um, following the same process as before, and I'm going to hand over to the chief executive. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Abbey? Four. Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Bate? Four. Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Buckley? Four. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Cooksey? Four. Councillor Cregan? Four. Councillor Davidson? Four. Councillor Daria? Four. That's the fellows. Four. That's Fitzsimmons. That's the Flaherty. Four. That's the D friend. Four. That's the G friend. Four. That's the Froggett. Four. That's the Grimes. Four. That's the Guthrie. Four. That's the Hall. Four. That's the Hannon. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Four. Thank you. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Chair Brown. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krizhanak. Four. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor C. Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Thank you. Councillor. Caramundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor P. Walker. Four. Councillor P. Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor S. Wright. Stephen, Councillor Carter, you've missed me off again. All right, Councillor Carter. All right. I'm just like Councillor Steve Wright. Councillor 
Okay, we've got Councillor Carter. Thank you, Jean. Sorry, I missed you. It's okay. I won't let it happen again. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you, Madam Mayor. OK, thank you. That's carried. Thank you, councillors. Moving on to item nine, which is questions received from members of the council. We have 11 questions. There are 30 minutes allocated to answering the questions. Any questions that have not been answered within this time scale will receive a written response. All questions will be taken as read. So question one is from Councillor Marks to Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin, could you respond? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Marks, for the question. I share your concerns and I think we all share your concerns about the efficacy of the National Track Test and Trace system. Um, we were promised a world beating system. Um, but our experience here in Warrington is far from that. And I note that Councillor Barr has also asked the leader about the same issue. The council uses all routes to feedback constructively, suggesting improvements that we feel could be made to show how to could be made to the system to make it work better. And we work closely with Public Health England Northwest and our colleagues across Cheshire and Merseyside, whose responsibility it is to follow up and do the contact tracing for cases linked to more complex settings, such as schools, large businesses, care homes, and so on. As a council, we are not resourced to deliver a full contact tracing service. However, we have trained up some staff locally to follow up on those cases that the National Test and Trace System has failed to reach. And we're also utilising those staff to follow up cases linked to outbreaks in the town to ensure that all potential links are identified in a timely way with the aim of stemming the spread of infection quickly. But capacity and resource at local authority level to do this is very limited. We continue to work with colleagues in Public Health England Northwest and across Cheshire and Merseyside to help refine systems and processes and to lobby nationally for the appropriate resources to enable local authorities to do this. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Marks, do you have a supplementary question? Um, yes, Madam Mayor, I do. Um, can the local testing, tracing and tracking numbers in Warrington be made available to the public, please? Councillor McLaughlin, would you like to respond? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question, Councillor Marks. I would need to check what information can be made available publicly. I think the information that we get, there is quite a lot of information already made um, and that feeds into the system. Um, but I know there are some limits on what we're able to publish uh, and sometimes that's about making sure it tallies and that it's correct. Um, so I couldn't promise that at this stage, but we can look into it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Next question is from Councillor Blockley to Councillor Higgins. Councillor Higgins, can you respond? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, firstly, thank, uh, thank you, Councillor Blockley, for the question. And I'm very happy to answer the question, but I must make it clear, it would be highly improper for me to speculate on the trading position or the role of directors, as you will probably understand. Now, nationally, the leisure sector has been significantly affected throughout COVID and continues to suffer. The closure of our leisure centres was the right decision to help keep people safe, and I support all ongoing measures that continue to protect our residents. However, like all leisure operators across the country, Livewire Community Interest Company has suffered and continues to suffer a significant loss in income. Now, unlike the Eat Out to Help Out scheme, that's been a huge success. There has been no such, such support for the leisure industry, such as Livewire. Now, the government has agreed to support local authority leisure services that are managed in-house through the local government income compensation scheme for lost sales, fees and charges. And after absorbing losses of up to 5% of their planned 2020-2021 uh, sales income, those areas, are, those areas are able to uh, claim back 75% of lost income. 
No, however, to date, there is no such scheme for local authority leisure services, which are delivered by an external organisation. And even for those delivered by charities or community interest companies that do not seek to make a profit, such as Livewire. This means neither Warrington Borough Council nor Livewire are able to claim anything for the loss in income, whereas other local authority areas are able to claim. It is also important to add at this point, the furlough scheme that's helped to support Livewire and other sectors of our economy will be ceasing at the end of October. Again, adding further unwelcome financial pressures. This inconsistency in approach is damaging to the leisure sector, mm. creating, a, creating a potential postcode lottery. So why hasn't the Warrington South MP Andy Carter contacted his chum Boris and demanded support for organisations such as Livewire? And maybe that should have been the beginning of this question. So in the short term, we have agreed to support Livewire with some expenses that allow Livewire to protect services, customers and their workforce as much as possible. We will also make sure that uh, we have all made, uh, made sure that the timings of our management fee payments to support with cash flow. Importantly, I must add that must add that the majority of Livewire staff are Warrington residents. However, as the pandemic continues, the longer term impact is still being monitored and assessed. And I am also planning to bring a report to Cabinet in the near future. However, unless the government decides to bring some equ equity to their approach in supporting local authority leisure services, I fear we face some challenging decisions going forward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Higgins. Councillor Buckley, do you have a supplementary? No, no, thanks. Thank you. No, Madam Moving, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Moving on to question three, which is Councillor Warburton to Councillor Mundry. Um, Councillor Mundry, can you please respond? Mm -hmm. Councillor Mundry, are you still there? I think the staff is speaking before switching my mic on, Madam Mayor. Right, off you go. If you'd like to start your response, Councillor, Councillor Mundry. Councillor Mundry? Still here. You still here. Would you like to respond to the question from Councillor Warburton? It's not muted. Yes, I'm trying to respond. Are you hearing me now? I, I can hear you now, yes. You, you just froze, okay, me, then. but we can hear you. I don't know what happened there. As I was saying, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, Paul, for the question. As you, as you may realise, we, we have been very busy. You are absolutely correct that the number of residents walking and cycling in Warrington increased significantly over the summer following the lockdown in March. Over this period, we continue to monitor the trends in travel behaviour as traffic levels start to return to closer to pre-March levels. Whilst a large, very large increase in cycling over the early summer months have uh, reduced, our most recent data shows that over the last month, we are still seeing cycling levels 25 to 30% higher than the same time last year. In common, with, in common with other parts of the country, Warren's Borough Council has been keen to capitalise on the increase uh, interest in cycling as we recognise the, the many health and environmental benefits that this brings. This has led to a number of schemes and activities being put, put in motion over the recent months. In the weeks immediately following the initial lockdown, Warrington utilised emergency active travel fund allocated by the Department for Transport to install a number of temporary traffic management me measures and pop-up cycle lanes in the town centre and other locations across the borough. The effectiveness of these measures was monitored and changes made as the situation with COVID has moved over. The last few months, currently, we, we, the measures in the town centre remain in place and we have been successful in reducing traffic through traffic within the town centre. Information on the work carried out can be found on the council website. As we install temporary infrastructure, we have accelerated those elements of promotion and publicity active travel still, still possible within the social distancing guidelines. For example, using a government grant, we have updated and reissued our cycle map guide for Warrington 
and distributed this to all households in the, in the borough around 21 pence per, per household. This is a very cost effective way of spreading the message of cycling and give residents information about where they can they can cycle today across the borough, both using dedicated routes and quieter roads. Following on from the initial funding application, the DFT lo local authorities over in bid for a second tranche of emergency active travel fund. Our bid submitted in August sets out our immediate, our immediate, immediate, immediate term plans to contribute to continue to support the growth of cycling and the schemes proposed to deliver with a successful bid include the scheme one, which is the central six access improvements. That's measures to support cycling and work in the central six wards. These include schemes to start to develop low traffic neighbourhoods in residence areas and through traffic is reduced and road condition becomes more cycling and walking friendly. Scheme two is a high, high quality segregated cycle route along the A562 and localised pedestrian improvements. Scheme three is the uh, town centre active travel measures uh, that's to make temporary traffic measurements and cycling measures implemented it over the summer permanent. Councillor Mundry, we appear to have lost you. Have I froze? Yeah, you're back again. It's OK. I'm, I'm back again. Yes, OK. Uh, I'll, I'll try to pick up where I finished off. We are currently awaiting the outcome of the government bid and we intend to start to start or at least a, of, of allocated the funds by the end of March this year of 2021. In the longer term, we want to deliver our cycling ambitions to set out the Council's local transport plan, LTP4, which is adopted by the Council policy in December 2019. The LTP4 sets out ambitious long-term commitment to transforming how we travel around Warrington. The vision that LTP4 sets out is, is a less car dependent culture and a town centre is less car dominated. There will be new opportunities to travel in different healthy ways around the borough. LTP4 recognises that if we if we are to be successful to deliver on our vision, we need to increase walking and cycling levels throughout the provision of through the provision of high quality, attractive infrastructure. A key factor to this is the availability and suitability of places where people can cycle and walk. The feedback from the public regarding cycling is that many busy junctions and routes in Warrington feel hostile and unsafe for people to travel by, or by cycle or on foot. There is clearly a need to further improve existing cycle infrastructures and reduce this general perception that the public confidence and awareness has, has improved. To start in de delivering this change, lo local plan, local LTP4 propose a number of further pieces of work to take forward. And our, our objective is to turn policy into action. The first of these is the first and last mile study, which is currently looking at improving sustainable and suitable travel across the town, town centre. In addition, we are look, delivering on many of the cycling networks described in the, in the council's local cycling and walking infrastructure and design work funded by uh, grants and local enterprise partnership is, is ongoing to deliver schemes and business cases to, for shovel ready schemes, ready to take advantage of the two billion pound funding announced by central government to be allocated over the coming years in cycling. However, we continue to accept. Councillor Mundry, we've run out of time for that question, so perhaps you could forward your response to Councillor Warburton. Yes, I'll, I'll make sure that it gets forwarded. OK, thank you. So we're going to move on to question thank four. Yeah. Um, OK, Councillor Warburton, I'm going to move on to question four for Councillor Butley to Councillor Bowden. Councillor Bowden, can you please respond? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to, um, to Councillor Buckley. Um, I think I've answered this question and probably similar related questions in the past. Um, officers within the Council um, continue uh, in their work to try and identify a suitable transit site, um, and that work supports um, the cross-party working group that was established in the council um, to do exactly that, to deliver a, a transit site for Warrington. Um, that transit site needs to meet um, the needs of both the travelling community and obviously residents of the borough. And um, 
you know, it's that recognition of uh, removing the repeated clash between the traveling and settled communities that means that what we're searching for is a suitable, mm -hmm. um, achievable and deliverable um, transit site um, for the town. The group, um, the sorry, the, the working group has looked at in excess of 300 sites within the town against the set of pre-agreed criteria um, and so far has been unable to arrive at um, a site which um, achieves the objectives that were set for it, um, principally being that that site you know, is achievable um, and can be brought forward. So the, um, the work of officers and the group continues. Um, in due course, um, when a potential site has been identified um, and has the support of the working group, then a report will be drafted by that working group and presented to the cabinet for approval. And I don't have a time frame for that currently. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Supplementary, Councillor Buckley? Uh, no, because uh, uh, Councillor Bowden has answered the fact there is no time timeline, no, no time frame, sorry. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Buckley. Um, question five from Councillor Walker to Councillor Mundry. Councillor Mundry, can you please respond? Councillor Mundry. OK, I am going to move on to the next question because obviously oh, is he back? Well, am I back? Am I on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you you can, can hear me now. Yes. OK, yes, thank if, you. If you can Thanks for that. I'll, say, I'll, I'll thank you by the mail. I'll try and be quicker for this and thank you for the question, Peter. Yes, uh, I did start with this. I tried. Uh, I've been trying to find reports from your meetings with Peel Ports from when you were running a council. Uh, to, so I could carry on from where you left off, but unfortunately I couldn't find any. I can, can confirm that discussions are ongoing between representative of Peel Ports and our own, and 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 our, who are responsible for the warrants and swing bridges. The council officers regarding Peel Ports plan plan to be uh, yeah do plan to refurbish and repaint. The, each of the bridges, of the three bridges, of, which are over 125 years old. Peel Ports have indicated they wish to undertake. Councillor Mundry, what I'm going to do is ask you if you can actually send that answer in writing because we keep losing you um, and, and obviously we can't hear it what your response is. So I'm going to ask if you can red. forward that um, that response in writing, please, for that question. OK, will do. Are you OK with that, Councillor Yes, Walker? fine, thank you. OK, thank you. I'm going to move on to question six from Councillor Harris to Councillor Guthrie. Councillor Guthrie, will you respond? Thank you, Madam uh, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Harris, for your question. Um, we've talked about air quality um, before uh, during this meeting, um, but the council is, is really fully committed to managing air quality. I mean, you can see in the report table tonight on page 29, the commitment in the latest corporate plan. We've also published our air quality management action plan, uh, which we are sort of looking at at the moment. Um, the government invite bids from local authorities to support schemes which help councils develop and implement measures to benefit schools, businesses and residents, reducing the impact on people's health and creating cleaner and healthier environments. The £4,000 you mentioned in the question is simply the balance of a previous grant. Um, during 2019-20, the, the council was successful in, our, in, a, in a bid and was allocated air quality funding of £87,350 from DEFRA. This was for an electric taxi project, which will encourage the take up of electric taxis through behaviour and awareness campaigns and the installation of some rapid charging points. The council will also develop um, low emission, a low emission taxi strategy for the future. Um, the government has now opened the latest window for these applications and we look forward to submitting innovative proposals in support of our plans and to build on our previous successful bids. 
and you can see our air quality plans are also fully integrated within our local transport plan and hands before quite rightly said about uh, the increase particularly through through the through COVID, but the increase in cycling and walking that our residents have, have had and the many schemes that are now in progress to help that. So it's actually the funding for our air quality is integrated throughout the council. So it's not just a budget that's been set aside for this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Guthrie. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Harris? Um, yes, I do. Thank you very much for your reply, um, Councillor Guthrie. Um, air quality is just one piece of the puzzle in terms of climate change. And I note all the um, um, uh, mitigations that are going on to counteract um, air quality in Warrington. Um, do you anticipate that um, all of these um, measures will bring Warrington in line with the United Nations Paris Agreement of 2015. Um, a report that I have seen um, indicates that Warrington will have to have a minus 13.7 um, uh, uh, year on year uh, decrease for at least the seven, next seven years. Thank you. Councillor Guthrie. Well, thank you for that. I mean, it, that is quite an ambitious target. And in terms of the Paris Agreement, we've, we've yet to see this government to responding to the Paris Agreement. You've only got to look at targets such as reduction in gas heating, which is non-existent at the moment. And I would find that this would be you know, a bigger problem. We've still got people using fossil fuel cars going through Warrington. And one of our things actually contained in the um, latest corporate plan is about reducing people using fossil fuel cars because the amount of people that are not using electric vehicles at the moment is quite considerable. And we are trying to encourage the swap over for that. So yes, while I agree with you, it is quite an ambitious target. I'm sure with our judicious um, approach to air quality, we can see a measure for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Guthrie. OK, moving on to question seven from Councillor Wheeler to Councillor Bowden. Councillor Bowden, can you please respond? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to, um, to Councillor Wheeler. Um, the, the budget monitoring report that she refers to, the, the amounts that are set out um, in that report uh, were earmarked to support the important infrastructure modelling that the council was undertaking. And, and far from it being us pressing on regardless, the exercise is intended to provide assurance that the construction of homes that are set out in the um, PSV local plan are preceded by delivery of the necessary supporting infrastructure. And that's obviously been a long term uh, and long standing commitment of the council. Um, the local plan is hugely important for our town um, in terms of future growth, well-being and prosperity. And we're working really hard to put everything in place to ensure that the, pl the plan is sound and it is deliverable. Um, and so it's vital that we get that right um, because, you know, it has a generational impact if we don't. Um, I think the question alludes to um, responses to the draft local plan consultation and um, I remind members we had um, something like three and a half thousand individual responses and, and representations from residents, developers and, and other stakeholders. Um, and it was really important that we listen to those um, uh, in terms of you know, responding positively to the consultative process. What was clear in was that there was um, a key public concern um, over infrastructure and that you know that came out um, throughout really the public responses that a really important factor for them was that the required infrastructure was put in place alongside the new developments rather than after the housing has been built and, and sadly you know that's a story we've seen um, on previous occasions here in Warrington with with major developments and so it's vital um, that we show that um, that infrastructure can be delivered 
um, that it can be done in a sustainable way. It can come alongside or ideally in front of um, housing developments. And so the funding that's set out in the budget monitoring report is actually allowing us to do that further work with our partners to demonstrate the viability, to show that we can bring forward the infrastructure, whether that's schools, roads, you know, general um, practitioners, uh, parks and community and cultural facilities to match that new housing. Um, and that's you know, a really important part of, of what we need to deliver. Um, and so I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Wheeler, do you have a supplementary? Um, I do. Thank you, Councillor Bowden, for that reply. Supplementary. Um, will the possible location of the Brexit Lorry Park in Appleton be taken into account in the feasibility study? The reason for asking is given that there is no indication of the increase in HGV traffic um, the Lorry Park will generate, um, nor the agreed routes the the, the traffic will take. This could potentially have a disastrous impact on the villages of Appleton, Thorn, Stretton and the surrounding area. So is the feasibility study going to take into account this lorry park? Thank you. Um, thank you for that supplementary, Councillor Wheeler. Um, uh, and without sort of jumping ahead to um, to the first motion on the um, agenda for tonight, obviously there's significant concern about um, the government's uh, special development order and the proposal for a lorry park. At the current time, we've had no indication from um, from government that they wish to proceed with that. Um, the legislation they brought forward um, set out 29 local authority areas, um, and uh, you know eight of those are in the northwest. So. Um, I don't think it's by any means certain that it'll come forward, but obviously any um, developments of that nature you know, could have a significant impact. And um, clearly we've had no commitment from government around infrastructure investment, no traffic assessments, um, etc. So um, if the government intends to, to bring something forward for, for South Warrington, then clearly it'll have to be part of um, the overall uh, assessment of the local plan. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. OK, we're going to move on to question eight um, from Councillor Bate to Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Bate, for your question. I'll keep it brief. Um, the latest information held on housing completion in Warrington is dated 1st of April 2019, and this indicates there were 2,499 homes with planning permission on sites where construction had not yet been completed. However, it should be noted that a significant number of these homes are on large developmental sites uh, located at Omega or on Homes England land in South Warrington, where construction has now started or is programmed to start. It's usual that there is a time lag between planning consent being granted by a local authority and homes being completed, particularly on larger sites. Having said that, from 2020 to 2021 onwards, we are projecting an increase in completions to over a thousand per annum. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Bate? Yes, please, Madam Mayor. Uh, again, a, a quick one, if I may. Would Councillor McLaughlin agree with me that the government's white paper, which the LGA was responding to when they released those numbers, offers little to reassure us that we will actually get the homes we need in the right places, and most importantly, with a proper framework of local accountability? Yes, yeah, certainly, Councillor Bates, I am concerned about the white paper. It doesn't offer the uh, answers that we need for Warrington, um, and it doesn't do enough to to allow us to lead and get the homes we need for the people that need them most. OK, thank you, councillors. We've actually got about a minute left, so I am going to, to move on and say that we'll we'll take um, the rest of the questions as written answers, if that's OK, because obviously we're not going to get much in within within a minute. So I'm going to move on to item 10. Um, four motions have been received. Motion one, Lorry Park and Inland Customs Point. Um, we have Councillor Bowden to propose and Councillor Mitchell to second. Councillor Bowden. 
Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to uh, propose this motion tonight and rather than go through the normal um, uh, rigmarole, I'll just get straight into it. Um, many members um, will have been as surprised as uh, as I was um, to see the government's announcement uh, regarding a special development order for South Warrington. Um, in, in response to Councillor Wheeler earlier, I was saying um, that the legislation they brought forward um, proposed 29 local authority areas, eight of them here in the northwest, including some of our neighbouring authorities. And I think what was most striking about um, the announcement was the absolute lack of consultation with local authorities. And I can only assume that Warrington's experience was shared by everybody else. Um, you know, to to basically come up with a proposal um, with no engagement with the local authority, no input from the local authority uh, regarding its suitability, um, whether there were better alternative sites and indeed what the government's objectives were um, for a lorry park and an inland customs point. And, and I think, you know, what, what it's symbolic of is this government's, you know, slapdash approach to um, withdrawal from the EU. Um, in terms of you know, lack of engagement uh, and lack of delivery, really. And, and at the 11th hour before um, you know, uh, the end of the transition um, period, um, we get things slapped on us like this in, in local communities. Um, and it wasn't just about lack of consultation for the council. Um, the fact that uh, the government's own MP in Warrington South didn't know about it beforehand shows you the kind of level of uh, incompetence over this whole process. I think there's some you know, fairly strong principles that are established in, in planning. Uh, obviously, the, the first of those being about local determination and, you know, councils have a good record in terms of planning. I think government likes to portray you know, local government as being the problem. When actually that's not the case at all. You know, there's a strikingly high percentage of planning applications go through. Um, you know, with the support of of um, local councils such as ours, and you know, perhaps this is an indication of what's to come. You know, with the government's approach um, in the white paper, um, there is a deep mistrust of local government, and you know, that's despite the fantastic work that local. Um, government has done over the last six months in relation to COVID and the role that they've they've played as leaders in their community. And what I think we're faced with now is a Google Earth approach to planning. You know, it, this just strikes me as being civil servants down in London sticking pins in maps and deciding where to plonk things. You know, we've had no discussion around, um, for example, you know, the traffic impact. You know, we're, we're looking here at um, a site which would operate 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. No promise around infrastructure um, investment which could support increased traffic to that order. And um, the government, you know, seems to be indicating well, it will bring us some jobs. You know, yeah, OK, there's a there's an existing site there and um, the former um, shearings interchange, you know, which obviously could be um, repurposed and there could be jobs associated with it. But as as of now, we've had no commitment on the number of jobs um, associated with that at all. And and the MP's um, sole defence um, for the actions of his government has been, well, you know, it's going to provide some jobs. I think that's a really dangerous precedent for the MP and it's a dangerous precedent for any of us because, you know, there are lots of people promising jobs. 656 and the Eddie Stobart's proposals for the south of Warrington, not far from uh, Barley Castle, proposed 5,000 jobs. So on that basis, is the MP expected to support those um, those applications? And my guess is he won't be. He'll find another convenient um, excuse. So um, I think it's up to local um, councils like ours to deliver on on planning. It's local councils that, like ours that understand the context, that are accountable to local residents in a way that national government isn't, um, that can take on board those concerns and will have a coherent approach to development in the town as a whole. Um, this uh, is an affront to local democracy, really. Um, and um, 
you know, I, I really do call upon our MP in the South, but actually both of our MPs to lobby government to engage properly with councils on the implications of planning matters like these. Uh, and therefore I propose this motion and, and uh, obviously hope for full support from my colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second this motion, but I don't intend to speak on it. OK, thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Um, I have Councillor Parrish down um, as wanting to speak um, to this. Are you there, Councillor Parrish? I am. Um, yes, Chair, it's been mentioned elsewhere that uh, the, the motion refers to the uh, announced changes to the planning system. So I thought it was worthwhile just mentioning we got not just the planning for the future white paper, we've already got permitted development rights being, uh, well, some of them are crazy. Uh, adding two people can add two stories to houses and things like that. But uh, I think this the white paper really does. Uh, it's well, this this proposal for the lorry park is a bit of a precedent for that, really, because that just proposes a concept of zoning areas and everybody would like to be in one of the protected areas, but most will not be. Um, developers looks like won't even have to pay to sit next to a minister at a Tory fundraising dinner to get what they want. Um, but de developers will have more of a free reign and the permitted development rights just sound like a, a recipe for the uglification of Britain. So it's just to make the point that the Lurie Park is just a, a foretaste of what's to come for the whole borough. The centralising shift in favour of developers and reducing the rights of residents to make local representations about local developments. I mean, people might not like all of our local planning decisions, but they are our local decisions. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Parrish. Does anybody else wish to speak? Yes, please, Madam Mayor. Is that Councillor Bate? It yeah. is. OK, Councillor Bate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just as both the Ward Council and the Liberal Democrat spokesperson on planning, I fully support this motion. Um, as the ward councillor, I'm deeply concerned by the, the kind of social and environmental impacts on the suggested site um, in Appleton Thorn, as it is. Uh, I won't uh, go into the uh, latest round of Mr Carter's hypocrisy on uh, on job creation and whether it's uh, which exact site he's going for. Um, but I will reiterate and emphasise what Councillor Bowden said, that this does suggest, together with the direction of travel, uh, of the planning white paper that there is a complete lack of respect by this government for local authorities and the communities they serve and I do echo calls to condemn this plan not only because of the impact on the local community I represent but because of the democratic deficit which decisions like this would create so I fully support the motion thank you Madam Mayor thank you Councillor Bay anybody else wishing to speak No, OK, I'm going to go back to you, um, you. Oh, who was that? No, no. OK, I'm going to go back to you, Councillor Bowden, um, if there's anything else you'd have like to say. So, no, I don't Mayor. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Apologies, Councillor Barr, my muting wasn't working properly. OK, sorry, Councillor Bowden, I'll put you on hold for a second. Councillor Barr. Uh, thank you. I, like Councillor Bate, will support this motion. I'm grateful to uh, Russ Bowden for bringing it. Uh, about half of the people in Warrington voted to leave the EU, and this uh, lorry park is a consequence. But what I would like to add is that many of those supporting uh, the Brexit case said it was unthinkable that we would leave the single market and the customs union. They absolutely assured us that customs posts would not be required. Certainly they weren't suggesting that if you voted for Brexit in Warrington South that you get a lorry park working 25, uh, 24 7, 365 days a year. And also the number of lorry movements there, uh, has the MP has suggested that we know different to the number of Shearing's bus movements. Well a Shearing's bus movement is one trip out, one a fortnight later it comes back, or a week later it, uh, it comes back. This will be lorries coming off the motorway absolutely non-stop if, if this goes ahead as is suggested. It, and that would cause chaos. And I would uh, like to add to that, that when the Stobart's application was being considered, our highways said that 
that road and that route to the M6 was only just viable for the additional number of movements that the Stobart's warehouse would generate. A customer's point is going to generate massively more movements. This hasn't been thought through, uh, and I agree with Councillor uh, Bacon and Councillor Bowden that our MPs' uh, hypocrisy on this has been absolutely flabbergasting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Back to Councillor Bowden. I'd best get in quick before somebody else uh, jumps in. I don't know. Um, no, I, I don't really have anything further to say. I think um, you know the, the views expressed by Councillor Bate and Councillor Barr are you know, no different to ours. You know, um, if this hasn't been thought through at all, and um, you know, I'm confident that that uh, council will support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Okay, we will be going to the vote following exactly the same process. So I'm going to now hand back over to the Chief Exec. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, Councillor Abbey? Four. Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Bate? Four. Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Buckley? Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Carter? Four. Councillor Cooksey? Four. Councillor Cregan? Four. Councillor Davidson. Councillor Derea. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Fitzsimmons. Councillor Flaherty. Four. Councillor D Friend. Four. Councillor D Friend. Four. Councillor Frogger. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hannon. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krizianak. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Ash Patel. Four. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tarr. Four. Councillor Peter Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. <coughs> Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor S. Bright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam, Madam Mayor, I'm really sorry, but I hadn't pressed the mute. So I wanted to vote for Jan Davidson. Thank you, Jan. OK, thank you. Madam Mayor, I don't think I was able to uh, get through as well. I want to vote for. Is it Councillor Durey? It is, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Madam Mayor, this is uh, Councillor Graham Friend. Uh, I've been at the Peel Hall inquiry all week using Microsoft Teams and they found that if you switched off your cameras, apart from yourself and who's ever speaking, everything live streamed a lot faster. They weren't video streaming everywhere and slowing the whole system down. That's just a suggestion, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Friend. I think some of the interference as well is that as, as we're going to the vote, I think obviously more people are putting on their microphones and we're getting a little bit of, certainly getting a little bit of interference. So perhaps everybody can remember again to, to turn their, their mics off when they're not speaking. But thank you for that, Councillor Friend. And their cameras will help, Madam Mayor. It does help. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. OK, that that motion was carried. Thank you. 
So we're going to move on to the second motion, which is Warrington Skyline. We've got Councillor Barr to propose and Councillor Bates to second. Councillor Barr. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I will propose this motion and speak to it immediately. Uh, I hope this motion is relatively uncontroversial. Uh, in the spirit of, co of cooperation, uh, all I'm asking for in this motion is that we should do what we said we were going to do in the master plan that was presented to this council and accepted by this council at the beginning of the year with an enthusiastic forward from our leader, uh, Councillor Bowden. Uh, it was a lavish document, a lavishly illustrated document showing uh, a really aspirational vision for the the future shape of, uh, 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 of Warrington. Uh, it also showed Warrington in many illustrations in three dimensions using a new um, 3D model that the council had spent a lot of money procuring and it had sections that said that we would have a supplementary planning document on building heights and that we would be giving guidance on building height and design. So uh, you will understand that I was extremely surprised when sitting on the Development Management Committee to be advised by a senior projects manager in the Development Management section that we should give little weight to the master plan for the town. And that just struck me as being wrong. It struck most of the rest of DMC as being wrong and, wh and why a decision uh, on the basis of that report was deferred. Now, this is an important issue. What we are dealing with here is what Warrington is going to be like as a town, what its shape is going to be, what shape it's going to be, what the skyline is going to be, what the town overall will be looking like for the next hundred years or so. And I believe that this is a decision that really has to be taken by the whole of the council after proper consultation and after taking proper advice. I'm open minded as to what the, the right height for buildings is likely to be. I'm not suggesting that we should have buildings uh, that are ridiculously high or ridiculously low. Um, but I think that this is something that has to be debated before we're asked to take decisions on individual planning applications, which will set precedents uh, for, the, for the future. So I very much hope that I'll have the support of the whole council uh, in uh, putting this through and that we will simply get what we've already been promised. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Park. Councillor Bate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to, to add briefly and to re-emphasise the building height, of course, it's a, sorry, am I, am I on? You are, but can you second, second the sorry, motion? Please? Sorry, I second the motion, Madam Mayor. I do apologise getting carried away myself. Too much uh, Zoom meetings, etc, etc. Yeah, I re-emphasise the point that building height determines the skyline, which in turn uh, determines the morphology and therefore the very character of Warrington. And they are by very nature long-term decisions as Councillor Barr says and therefore they need to be considered holistically and strategically and the Town Centre Master Plan made some progress towards doing that. I would just add that as Councillor Barr suggested these decisions that DMC but the Council as a whole takes are hugely important but they're also a massive privilege because they're very much a legacy which we will leave for generations in terms of the shape and character of the town. So I hope that uh, like Councillor Barr said Colleagues, don't see this as controversial uh, and we can work collegially to get a better um, process going forward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bate. Do any other members wish to speak? Uh, yes, me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Bowden. Councillor Bowden, OK. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I, I suppose I, I'm probably a little bit confused by the motion because the motion doesn't seem to be asking for anything um, which you know is not already in train. Um, I, I, I appreciate Councillor Barr remembering my enthusiastic support. Um, it, this still has my absolutely enthusiastic support, and and I don't think our ambition or vision for the for the town centre is is any different. Um, you're correct about the master plan being brought to council in early 2020. Um, the supplementary planning document um, was obviously meant to support that. And, and it's, it obviously plays a key role, but it it's also um, comes with a commitment to consult um, both with members, uh, with members of the Development Management Committee, as well as, you know, all council members, also to consult with developers and other stakeholders in terms of helping to shape that policy and determine what um, 
uh, what the, the uh, building height design sort of rules will be for for our town. Um, I, I mean, I'm guessing um, Councillor Barr forgot about what, what's been going on the last six months. Um, uh, it's quite clear that work um, on the supplementary planning document and indeed other parts of um, development um, in the town have been delayed by the council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, and, and we had officers from uh, our um, growth team and from within Warrington and Co who were redeployed all over the council basically to manage um, matters um, relating to, for example, the management of, uh, of PPE for um, frontline care services. So the work has been delayed. I have confirmed with officers that that work has been picked up again. I'm told that um, that uh, supplementary planning document will be available in um, early 2021. The date I've been, sorry, the date I've been given is February. And so, you know, really, um, I'm, I'm not sure why we're having a motion uh, requesting that the council does what it's already set out to do. Um, I appreciate um, the concern over timing. Um, it doesn't help um, that applicants can obviously bring forward uh, applications for uh, development on their own uh, land, which are out with um, informal discussions that have been held through the pre app process. Um, and I do understand, you know, the concerns of, of DMC members, but um, ultimately we could have addressed this by um, by having the question raised with either myself or with officers or the relevant portfolio holder. I'm not sure why we have to have a motion um, asking us to do what we're already committed to doing. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Anybody else wish to speak? No, OK, I'm going to go back to um, Councillor Barr then. Do you have anything further to add? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, the, 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 thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the reason this motion is here is that what the council said it was going to do, it hasn't done. And now we have a commitment tonight from Councillor Bowden that it will do it, but it won't do it until February of uh, next year. Uh, the, other, the other issue is who will be involved in this discussion? And it strikes me that this is a discussion that really ought to be uh, for the whole of the council, because as Councillor Bates said, it determines the nature and the character of uh, Warrington for the next generation. Now, the other issue, and it's included in the in the motion, uh, is that Development Management Committee should be briefed on the emerging policy. Now, the reason for that is that when the Stobart's application came to us and we said it was premature, we were told, oh, there's an emerging policy that's going to be taken out of Greenbelt, so you should vote for, for Stobart's. So when it's convenient, emerging policy is taken into account and, we're, and development management committee is advised to take account of emerging policy uh, when it's when it's inconvenient then we're told by senior planning officers that we should take no account of the master plan uh, and we shouldn't treat the master plan as emerging policy now we need to overcome that confusion between now and february and the way we can overcome that confusion is by voting in favor of this motion tonight thank you madam mayor Thank you, Councillor Barr. OK, we are going to take this to the vote following exactly the same procedure as before. So I'm going to hand over to the Chief Exec. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Abbey. Against. Councillor Barr. For. Councillor Bate. For. Councillor Bowden. Sorry, against. Councillor Buckley. For. Councillor Carey. Against. Councillor Carter. Against. Councillor Cooksey. Against. Councillor Cregan. Against. Councillor Davidson. Against. Councillor Drea. Against. Councillor Fellows. Against. Councillor Fitzsimmons. Councillor Flaherty. Against. Councillor D. Friend. Against. Councillor G. Friend. Against. Councillor C. Frogger. For. Councillor Grime. Against. Councillor Guthrie. Against. Councillor Hall. Against. 
Councillor Hammond. Against. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Hart. Against. Councillor Higgins. Against. Councillor Hill. Councillor Hill. Thank you. Against. Got you, got you, Andrew. Councillor Jennings. Against. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Kerbrand. Against. Councillor Kerbrand. Against. Councillor King. Against. Councillor Knowles. Against. Councillor Krizanak. Councillor Krizanak. Councillor Marks. For. Councillor McCarthy. Against. Councillor McLaughlin. Against. Councillor Mitchell. Against. Councillor Morgan. Against. Councillor Morris. Against. Councillor Hans Mundry. Against. Councillor Karen Mundry. Against. Councillor Parrish. Against. Councillor Patel. Against. Councillor Matt Smith. Against. Councillor Morgan Tart. Against. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Warburton. Against. Councillor Warburton. Councillor Wellborn, Councillor Wheeler, four, Councillor T. Williams, against, and Councillor Steve Wright. Thank you, members. Thank you. The motion is defeated. Thank you, councillors. Okay, moving on to motion three, year of the nurse. Councillor Marks to propose, Councillor Wheeler to second. Councillor Marks? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I propose this motion. But in the interest of brevity, I will say very little because I think the motion is fairly comprehensive. Now, 2020 was designated as the first ever global year of the nurse and midwife by the World Health Organization in recognition of the work carried out across the world by health professionals. Because 2020 also marks 200 years since Florence Nightingale was born, and she is regarded as the founder of modern nursing, as well as being a social reformer. All over the world, nurses and midwives care for people from all age groups, all sections of society, all creeds and ethnicities. Now, when the WHO designated 2020, little, of course, did they know of the critical role all health and care workers would be playing due to the virus. Many have lost their lives, putting society before their own needs. Now, it's easy to forget that for many years, Warrington Council was an employer of nurses. This, of course, is not the case now, but one thing the crisis has demonstrated is the huge advantage of health workers and council staff working closely together. Warrington was making good progress in collaborative working and the common enemy of COVID has accelerated this. Now, the motion asked for the council to recognise our thanks to nurses and midwives for their massive contribution to the health and well-being of Warrington residents by sending letters of thanks where appropriate or when appropriate by exhibitions in public areas. Please give it your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marks. Councillor Wheeler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I second this motion and I really cannot, I don't think, add anything to what Councillor Marks has already said. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. Does anybody else wish to speak? Anybody else? Yeah, to Councillor speak? Warburton. Councillor Warburton, um, OK. Just that it's just, um, I'm very happy to support this, but um, just as an aside, the um, World Health Organization Europe have just announced. Mm -hmm. They're going to extend the year of the nurse to into 2021 as well. So we will have further opportunities to uh, recognise the work and contribution of the nurses and midwives um, next year. And hopefully uh, more people will get to see it if um, and when COVID disappears. So uh, thanks. I'm happy to support this. Thank you, Councillor Warburton. Anybody else wish to speak? No, I'm going to pop back to Councillor Marks then. Do you have anything further to add? 
All I want, no, th thank you, Paul, for that extra bit of information. No, uh, thank you. I, I trust it will get unanimous support because it's not a contentious motion. I think it's just a worthy thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marks. OK, we will go to the vote again following the same procedure and I will hand over to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Barr. Four. Councillor Bate. Four. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Yeah, I did. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Coxey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Daria. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Flarty. Four. Councillor Diane Friend. Four. Councillor Graham Friend. Four. Councillor Froggart. Four. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hallen. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Councillor Hill. Four. Thank you. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Four. Councillor Krizinak. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Muktar. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor Steve Wright. Okay, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Um, motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on now to motion four, food justice. We have Councillor Jennings to propose and Councillor Hall to second. Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, uh, well, uh, propose the motion. Members, it only takes one emergency. The cooker or fridge breaks down. You haven't got any savings because savings aren't possible on a minimum wage, zero hour contract, and suddenly you're in crisis where loans with extortionate rates look like a lifeline against the choice of not heating your home, paying the rent or buying food. This can and does very quickly spiral out of control. This scenario will be far too familiar in our casework for too many of us here tonight. Why? Because in one of the richest countries in the world, more than four million children are now growing up in poverty with their access to adequate nutrition compromised. An estimated eight million people in the UK are not getting enough to eat. The torment that must bring, the inescapable mental health impact, the sheer stress of not knowing where the next meal may be coming from. This is a scourge exacerbated by COVID but has been a crisis without the intention it sorely needs for far too long. Schools, charities and groups of concerned citizens have commendably tried to fill the gap and I don't have enough allotted time to pay tribute to all of the admirable local groups and residents who have helped feed struggling families through this pandemic and throughout the last decade 
of austerity in which we've seen food bank usage rise year on year. The situation is so dire that Parliament's Environmental Audit Committee last year recommended that the government appoint a Minister for Hunger. This is yet to happen amidst a 122% increase in demand for help to access food from struggling UK families during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is an absence of responsibility and it shouldn't take a 22 year old Premier League footballer to embarrass the government into action on food poverty. Members, nutritious and healthy food is a right. Tonight, the motion in front of you seeks to get a true measure of the problem locally through our scrutiny committee. It commends the community response and strives to strengthen those efforts by developing a food justice action plan by the end of 2021 and calls on the government for a more strategic approach to the issue of food poverty nationally. I hope it will receive the Council's full support tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. You. Councillor Hall. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I second this motion and um, I will speak to it as well. How can it be right that people are facing hunger and destitution in the sixth largest economy in the world? The food, and yet they are. The food poverty crisis is not new, but it is getting worse. The consequences of food poverty have major health impacts throughout life, ranging from hunger, malnutrition and obesity to social consequences, such as shame and social exclusion. The causes of food, uh, food poverty are complex and interrelated. Financial causes predominate include low income and unemployment. Other important causes include poor access to affordable food and lack of budgeting or cooking skills. Wider social and economic determinants such as welfare reforms also play a vital role. Even before the pandemic hit, a growing number of people were finding themselves living food insecurity, with many families relying on free school meals to ensure their children are guaranteed at least one healthy meal each day. Over the last 10 years, increasing living costs, stagnating wages and often the rollout of universal credit and the wider benefit system have meant that levels of hunger in Britain are some of the highest across Europe. Human Rights Watch said in May 2019 that crisis levels of food poverty cannot be fixed without concerted effort by the government to take clear responsibility in developing solutions to the problem. In the face of this growing crisis over the past decade, across the country we have seen charities, local volunteers and councils step up to try to protect their fellow citizens from hunger. They have been a lifeline and Warrington is no exception. Since opening their doors in 2012, Warrington Food Bank has been providing emergency food parcels. Since then, demand for the parcels has been growing. And it's thanks to the fantastic work of the food bank manager, David McDonald, and his team of volunteers, and of course, the generosity of the people from across our town that has meant that the food bank has been able to meet the growing demand. The Welfare Reforms Action Partnership has shone a light on the issues of people not being able to afford food, and has come up with a practice, practical solutions such as the Warrington Food Pantry and helping others to coordinate schemes which look to help to support ch uh, children during the school holidays. Other local responses like the Happy Hub, Friends of Meadowside and Fair Share have been set up. Donations to these causes continue to be needed desperately, but without action to tackle the root causes of hunger, they won't do more than fill an ever-growing gap. People will still be hungry and in need of support next week and the week after, so we must go further. COVID-19 has undeniably exacerbated an already significant problem. A growing number of parents on low wages are going without food to make sure their children are fed. It goes against the instinct of every parent to see their child go hungry. We're seeing working people whose low wages leave them struggling to buy nutritious food and older people unable to prepare meals without support. Throughout lockdown, I saw the impact of this firsthand in my ward. I was regularly contacted by people seeking emergency support. With the furlough scheme coming to a close and the double impact of recession and escalating food costs due to Brexit, I fear that it will be a hard winter indeed for many local people. So what can be done to eliminate hunger in our communities? 
Well, incorporating sustainable development goal two into domestic law would send a powerful signal about the UK's commitment to addressing food poverty. We need concerted and joined up governmental approach uh, in order to provide a strategic response to food poverty in our town. And we can achieve this by developing and adopting a food action plan with a clear pathway to delivering meaningful change that means everyone who needs it has access to food. Whilst this motion will not eradicate food poverty overnight, its adoption is a major step forward in tackling food poverty locally. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I don't actually think you seconded the motion. Can you just do that oh. for me now? I second the motion. <laughs> OK, thank you. Now I've got down that Councillor Smith wants to speak on this. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Research suggests that families with children have been hardest hit by the pandemic. A recent study found that families with children were far more likely to be facing serious financial difficulty compared to households without. Members with links to education will be familiar with the disadvantage gap. The difference between the academic achievements of disadvantaged and non-disadvantaged children. A large number of disadvantaged children are growing up in poverty and a hungry child cannot perform to the best of their ability in school. We have a moral duty to do everything in our power to address the achievement gap and reducing food poverty is a crucial step in the right direction. During the pandemic this government has repeatedly failed to show the leadership required to properly address food poverty. The Eden Red Voucher Scheme for free school meals was an ongoing disaster throughout the summer term. Our local schools had already put systems in place to ensure our, our eligible children received a meal each day before the Eden Red Scheme was launched. Our schools continued to fill the gap when the government-backed Eden Red Scheme failed them. In the half-term holiday, the government dilly-dallied before eventually deciding the scheme would cover the holiday break. But unbelievably, this came several days after the holiday had started, when we'd already made other arrangements to ensure children were being fed. This government has an exceptionally poor record when it comes to addressing poverty, the impacts of child poverty and food poverty. We saw a glimmer of hope when the government U-turned over free school meal provision during the holidays, showing that public opinion can push them in the right direction. Unfortunately, we cannot trust this government to take the right decisions to address issues such as food poverty without maintaining this kind of pressure. By agreeing this motion, the council will add to the voices calling for further and ongoing reform to address food poverty. And as such, I fully support the motion. I'd like to thank councillors Jennings and Hall for putting it before us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Does anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Graham. Add a few words. It's was it was it Graham friend? It was ma'am, thank you. OK, Graham. Right, and um, as chair of the scrutiny committee in the uh, in this motion, it asked me to investigate the extent of hunger in Warrington and to add it to the future agenda of the scrutiny committee within six months. I'm quite happy to do that and uh, I fully support this motion. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Friend. And there was somebody else indicating, but I couldn't pick up. Somebody else indicating? It was Councillor Knowles. Councillor? Knowles. OK, sorry, Councillor Knowles. Please go ahead. OK, um, I just wanted to add a, a small point, really, that uh, we need to remind ourselves that the austerity of the last 10 years is um, it's a political choice. We've got a government that can spend millions and millions of pounds on projects that don't work, but it isn't investing in um, making sure that we've got children that are properly nourished and people that are properly nourished. And I think that we need to remind the government that this is bad economics. If you set off in life with adverse circumstances, such so such as food poverty, then it affects your life course. And that means that you're going to be less resilient in your adult life, perhaps. And it means that you may um, have extra calls on the health service as your life progresses. So we need to make sure that in Warrington, we've got a good grip of, um, of, of an understanding of the um, scenario right across the borough, because no part of Warrington is untouched by this. And we need to remind ourselves of the values that we've just talked about in the um, corporate strategy, which are about having resilient 
healthy, happy citizens in the town. They just can't do that if they're too hungry. Thank you, Councillor Knowles. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? No? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Councillor Barr? Councillor Barr, yeah, indeed. Uh, I'm very happy to, well, uh, uh, that's the wrong way of phrasing it. I'm very sad to have to support this motion. I think that this motion is absolutely right. Uh, and it's not only in the parts of the town that are associated with deprivation that these problems uh, have come to the fore during the COVID crisis. There's been a massive volunteer effort uh, right across the town. I'm familiar with what's been happening in, in Lim in terms of uh, uh, delivering food parcels to uh, families who were in difficulties and it is absolutely humbling seeing what an impact the delivery of that food has on families with children. So uh, even in the rich parts of the richest, uh, uh, of sixth uh, largest economy in the world, uh, there are still many corners and many families that are suffering from the same problems. Uh, so I'm happy to support this motion tonight. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Anybody else? No. Nope. OK, I'm going to pop back to Councillor Jennings as you have a right to reply. No right to uh, reply. Nothing to, more to say, uh, Madam Mayor, other than thank you for everyone else's contributions. OK, thank you, Councillor Jennings. OK, again, we will take this to the vote following the same procedure and I will hand over to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Barr. Four. Councillor Bates. Four. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Coxey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Councillor Drea. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Flaherty. Four. Councillor Diane Friend. Four. Councillor Graham Friend. Four. Councillor Frogger. Four. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hannon. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krizanak. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Thank you, Karen. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Tony Williams. Four. And Councillor S. Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. We will now move on to item 11 on the agenda, members scheme of allowance. Members, can I welcome two of the members of the panel, Paul Taylor and Alan Kemp, to the meeting. On behalf of the council, can I thank the panel for their work and especially to Paul as chair, who has now finished his term of office. 
Before we move to the proposal, can I confirm that the panel wish the term of both the SRA and the basic allowance to be from 2021 until 2024, in line with the term of office of the elections in May 2021? This therefore means a change to the recommendation at one, which will be a change from 2025 to 2024, at four, which will be a change from 2025 to 2024, and at five, um, the scheme is detailed in Appendix 1 of the report be agreed by the Council subject to the references to 2025 being changed to 2024 in relation to the term of the SRA and the basic allowance schemes. Details have been circulated regarding this this afternoon. Councillor Bowden, can you propose the report? Can you propose the report? And Councillor Mitchell, can you second it, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to um, propose uh, this report tonight and obviously support the recommendations. Um, councillors will know that um, councillors are required to have a um, scheme of allowances um, and as part of that, um, an independent remuneration panel makes uh, or provides advice on the adoption of the scheme. And so we as a council need to take um, note of the recommendations of that independent panel before we make or amend uh, the allowances scheme for members. Um, this report was due to come to full council in March. Obviously that meeting was um, cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic um, and so that's why it's um, here in front of us um, tonight. Um, before sort of moving into the recommendations, I'd like to echo um, the comments made by yourself, Madam Mayor, in terms of thanking uh, the Independent Remuneration Panel for their work. Um, I think hopefully members will see um, the kind of deliberations that were made by uh, the Independent Panel um, as set out in Section 3 of the report. And clearly what they've tried to do is to benchmark our allowances uh, more widely against um, data available um, from the local government um, community through um, SIPFA, for example, um, consultation with us all as members, but obviously trying to compare with um, allowances schemes that are applied uh, in other um, similar authorities such as ourselves. Um, I'm pleased that you mentioned about the um, change to 2024, so I won't I won't cover that. And obviously, I'll move um, the recommendations in due course in line with the statement that you made at the start, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it, you know, his, historically, we've um, accepted the findings of, of the independent panel and their recommendations. And uh, on occasion, we've rejected them in order to take lower cost options. I think the panel in their report have, have set out um, a good part of the history and for a number of years there was no changes um, to, the, to the scheme, particularly during the early years of, of austerity. Um, through the benchmarking exercise um, that the panel has conducted, um, they are proposing some changes to um, the special responsibility allowances um, and obviously members may, um, may have views on those tonight. Um, and obviously probably express those during the consultation process. Um, in terms of those recommendations, they're obviously made on the basis of the panel's interpretation of roles and responsibilities, uh, whilst working with a, within a manageable budget for allowances um, with the council as a whole. Um, and so um, the changes are proposed you know, on that basis and their, their understanding. In terms of um, basic allowances, um, there's actually two options put forward in the recommendations. The first of which um, is to raise the basic allowance um, by 1.7%, which was the uh, CPI figure in February 2020, um, or by 2.75%, which is the amount given to staff as part of the pay award. Our principle in previous years has been um, to take the lower figure. Um, and indeed, at section 4.2, um, it talks about um, the decisions were made in the previous two years. Um, and so in, in terms of uh, formally uh, moving this motion, my, my recommendation to members would be that we adopted the same principle and took the lower figure, i.e. the 1.7% um, increase to the basic allowance. I note that that um, is to run through to April 2021. Um, and then the panel are recommending that we move to a new flat figure of 8,750 um, in terms of the basic allowance. 
I think the point has been recognised by the panel um, as you know, we have uh, perhaps discussed and, and argued before that actually the basic allowance is at quite a low level compared to comparable authorities. So um, I, I think that that change is, is recognised and welcomed. The other um, consideration obviously for members is around um, the civic allowances um, and the proposal um, within the report, which is that the, the uh, mayor and deputy mayor's consorts um, would not um, attract a, a special responsibility allowance in future and that the combined um, total of the mayor and deputy mayor um, SRAs are set at 100% of the leaders SRA. Obviously if members um, considered that um, the consort roles should uh, attract an allowance the recommendation is there in paragraph 4.4.5 that that comes out of um, the, the relevant allowance for the mayor or deputy mayor working to that same overall budget. So in terms of uh, discussion points, I suppose that those are um, the principal ones around changes to some of the SRAs um, and obviously adoption of um, the basic allowance and being mindful of, of what is suggested for the civic allowances. So I'll move to the recommendations as in uh, section nine of the report, noting the changes um, already outlined um, by Madam Mayor and obviously my recommendation for 9.1 uh, item two is that we adopt the 1.7%. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Mitchell, do you have anything to add? I have nothing to add, Madam Mayor. I just uh, second the report. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Could I just add one thing? It's Councillor Knowles. Yep, Councillor Knowles. Go ahead. OK, it, it was just in relation to the health. It was, thank you, Madam Mayor. It was in relation to the Health Scrutiny Committee. I think uh, since this report was prepared, everybody will appreciate that things are very complex in the health territory and uh, there are all sorts of changes afoot in which it's going to be really important to make sure that Warrington gets the best arrangements that it can. I think uh, the Health Scrutiny Committee is a scrutiny committee and it does have power to uh, call in decisions. It also deals with um, a very wide variety of external um, attendees to the committee. So I think in the, in the light of the COVID situation that um, decisions relating to health for the borough are of uh, sort of paramount interest to, to people in Warrington. Um, I think that the figure that uh, that's there against health scrutiny perhaps is one that um, ought to be reconsidered in the light of the anticipated workload of that committee going forward. Certainly over the next couple of years it's going to be a, a very busy time and quite a complex time in the arena of, uh, of health. Thank you. So thank you, Councillor Nose. Anybody else wish to speak? Um, Councillor Warburton. Councillor um, Warburton. I, I would just like to um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I declare an interest that I'm currently the um, Deputy Chair of Health Scrutiny Committee by IACO and support what um, Councillor Knowles has just said regarding the Health Review and Scrutiny Committee and the SRA attached to that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to ask, have we got Paul Taylor? Are you doubt in available? I wonder whether you'd like to address any of those points made. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I'm present. Thank you very much. Uh, quite happy to respond to the uh, subject about the health scrutiny. Um, it does state in the report that um, it, this is all based on evidence of uh, past and present, uh, looking at all the minutes and uh, this review is taking place over um, I've, um, been present for the last nine years while we've been working on this so it's gone it's gone on a while and we've interviewed a lot of people and looked at a lot of things uh, but it does state in there as well that we we acknowledge that times change things change um and everything's up for uh, review in the future if required okay thank you thanks for that paul appreciate it okay does anybody else wish to speak any other councillors wish to speak can I cl make, uh, just clarify a point, Madam Mayor? Councillor Bowden, 
Um, yeah, I think I think we're back to you because nobody else appears to want to speak now by the sound of oh, it. So I'll come back to you. OK, I, I didn't know whether it prompted any more questions. I, I just wanted to clarify because because clearly the role, you know, we've received the recommendations of the independent panel and um, and obviously we have to have regard of those. Um, is it in the council's gift to um, retain um, the health scrutiny allowance as it currently is? I mean, I'm just thinking about the comments that have been made by Councillor Knowles and Councillor Warburton. Um, or does it need to be sent back to the independent remuneration panel for further consideration? I'm not actually clear what the process is. Um, well, council would be able to, but it would have to be an amendment to what, what's been proposed. OK, thank you. Well, I mean, the, the point that's been made I, is not, you know, I've already moved the recommendations. If somebody wants to make, you know, propose an amended um, scheme, then that obviously a matter for them. But it doesn't seem like anyone's coming forward. So on that basis, I'll um, uh, propose the report as I set out previously. OK, thank you, Councillor Bowden. Um, Madam, I think we're going to... Madam Mayor, sorry, it's Councillor Wheeler. Councillor Wheeler. Sorry, I just wanted to add something before you close um, the discussion on this. Just to say that, can I give sort of a word of thanks to the chairs, or certainly the chair of um, DMC, um, for the incredible work that she's done. Um, we have met, <laughs> um, I was going to say relentlessly, very frequently, um, you know, when no other committees were meeting. And I think we've got our meetings now. Councillor Wheeler, I think we're probably on the wrong item. We're on item 11 at the moment. My, sorry, Chair, am I? Are we talk, I was talking about members' allowances. Oh, OK. Carry sorry, on. sorry I'll, I'll be brief, Chair. It's getting a bit late. Just to say, um, DMC has met, and I know licensing is met. And I think, can we give um, a word of appreciation to the chairs of those committees? Um, because I think they have really earned their special allowances um, during this period. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that, and, and, and I agree. Thanks, Councillor. We OK, we are now going to go to the vote, because I am presuming now that everybody has, has had chance to speak who wants to. So following the same process, I'm going to hand over to the Chief Exec. Thank you. Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Barr. Four. Councillor Bates. Four. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Cooksey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Daria. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Flarty. Four. Councillor Diane Friend. Four. That's a grand friend. Four. That's a frogger. Four. That's a grime. Four. That's a Guthrie. Four. That's a hall. Four. That's a Hannon. Four. That's a Harris. Four. That's a Hart. Four. That's a Higgins. Four. That's a Hill. Four. That's a Jennings. Four. That's a Keen. Four. That's a Kerr Brown. Four. That's a King. Four. That's a Knowles. Four. Four. That's a Krizianak. That's a Marks. Four. That's a McCarthy. Four. That's a McLaughlin. Four. That's a Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Abstain. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. 
And Councillor Steve Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. The motion, is, sorry, that is that is carried. Um, we're going to go on to item 12, appointment of chairs of the Licensing Committee and Development Management Committee. Um, I have Councillor Bowden to propose the report and Councillor Mitchell to second. Councillor Bowden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In, in the home straight now, so I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. Um, Obviously, this report is uh, to formalise the appointment of chairs of development management and licensing committees. Obviously, members recall um, the sad passing of uh, the chair of licensing, Councillor Pauline Nelson, um, and Councillor Tony McCarthy, who's been chair of development management committee for the last um, eight, nine years, um, has temporarily stood down to a, uh, due to a change of his circumstances. So. Um, I recognise Councillor Weeder's point that she made uh, in the previous item, um, you know, in terms of uh, thanking uh, Councillor Joan Grime and Councillor Les Morgan for the sterling work they've done um, in the past few months. Um, and so the purpose of this report is to formally appoint um, Councillor Joan Grime as chair of the Development Management Committee uh, and Councillor Les Morgan as chair of the Licensing Committee until the next annual meeting of Council, which is currently scheduled for November 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowden. Councillor Mitchell. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I, I'll second that report. I have nothing to add. OK, thank you. Um, anybody else wish to um, make any comments? Any other councillors got any comments to add? Madam Mayor. Who, who is it? It's Councillor Tony McCarthy. May, may I just say a few words, please? You may, Tony, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to say, uh, uh, most of the people know I've had some uh, medical difficulty over the last few months, which are still there, unfortunately. But I want to add my thanks to all the committee members for the fantastic work they've done during my term of office as chair. And a special thank you to Joan for taking over the role as chair. I've had fantastic reports of all the sterling work they've done. So hopefully I've got a date now for my, my, my surgical procedure, which is Wednesday of next week. If it's successful, I'll be highly delighted to rejoin the committee at some time in the near future. So a special thanks to everybody on DMC. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Councillor McCarthy, and, and, and all the best to you. Um, and I'm sure those those words were, were appreciated. Um, thank you. So if there's nobody else that wishes to add anything um, for yeah, the last time. This... Sorry, is that is that Councillor Grime? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Thank you. Can I just uh, express my appreciation to Tony for the tremendous work that he has done over the past few years? Um, I've just tried to follow in his footsteps and, and do what he would do because he was a, a tremendous um, mentor and, and leader uh, in, in this work and he has been a tremendous chair of planning and I miss him every day. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you for those words, Councillor Grime. OK, we're going to go to the vote again and I'm going to um, pass over to the Chief Executive again. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Abbey. Four. Councillor Bart. Four. Councillor Bate. Four. Councillor Bowden. Four. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Carey. Four. Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Cooksey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Daria. Four. Councillor Fellows. Four. Councillor Flarty. Four. Councillor Diane Friend. Four. Councillor Graham Friend. Four. Councillor Froggett. Four. Councillor Grime. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hannon. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Kurt Brown. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Knowles. 
Councillor Knowles. Four. Thank you. Councillor Krizinak. Councillor Mox. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. I've abstained. Thank you. Councillor Morris. Four. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Four. Council, thank you, Paul. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor Steve Wright. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That's carried. Um, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, it's been quite a long meeting, but can I thank you all for your attendance? And, and I think we've we've done reasonably well at getting ourselves through um, our first full meeting um, using Teams. So um, thank you again to all of you, and I hope you have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 B